Welcome back to another Inktober video. I have completely lost count of what number video this is, but that's all right. Let's just get straight into the first prompt in this video, and that is day 17, Salty. Now here's a fun fact for you in regards to the origins of calling someone salty, apparently, according to the internet. If you don't already know, and if you don't know, you have been living under a rock, salty is a slang for someone who is resentful, cranky, because they have either lost at something or have been disappointed or are just being petty. The origins go back to 1938 when soldiers were tough or aggressive. They would refer to themselves or others that were angry as salty, adapting it from being on a boat at sea for long periods of time. So for this illustration that I did for salty, I decided to go with a sort of a monster, um, shock horror, um, a sort of a sailor monster and he is, uh, he's got no legs, he's just walks on his hands and he's got like this big barb type thing sticking out from his stomach with spikes. Don't know, that just felt right, just created this guy. Like when I get a prompt, I just create from my mind's eye and this is what I come up with. And he's got a little tattoo of an anchor on his arm and he's got a little sailor's hat and he's ripped the head off of a monster pirate. So he, he's, he's salty, so I suppose he's cranky, he's been at sea for so long, they come across some pirates, and he's uh, got the shits with him and ripped his head off because, you know, pirates are bad, and he's just like got one finger in the eye hole of this thing, and the other one's uh, got a patch over it, and he's just carting this disgusting head off um, to dispose of it somewhere, so... Yeah, that is my story for that prompt and I'll let you watch the rest of this one and I'll be back in a minute. Day 18, Scrape. What I came up with for this one was a hand scraping down a board. And I have no idea, but I looked into this to why fingernails, you know, scraping down a chalkboard, why it irritates our very nerves. Apparently the sound can trigger a fight or flight response because the sound is a frequency that is sensitive for our hearing and the natural reaction to hearing the sound is to get the hell out of that situation. So the noise is of a frequency that our ear canals have evolved to identifying as a survival mechanism. The noise rated between 2000 to 5000 hertz is an unpleasant sound to us much like distress calls from animals, humans screaming, and babies crying. It's basically our primitive instincts that kick in when we hear this horrible sound. 
Apparently the feeling that we get from hearing this sound is as horrible as being disgusted, like a feeling of disgust with something. I'm thinking of this sound right now and it is making my teeth feel chattery. Like I, I get this too with polystyrene as well. It just gives me the shivers and it makes my teeth feel really sensitive. Oh, uh, it's just... It's just awful. Like oh, as I'm talking about it, I my teeth are just feeling awful. Like I cannot handle being around this noise. Like if I order something and it has got polystyrene around it, like even opening up new um, new devices, uh, especially monitors and all that, I just I hate it. Like oh my god, I can feel it. You're just gonna have to give me a moment while I try and forget the noise. <laughs> So yeah, naturally for this illustration, I went with a blackboard and a severed hand. Uh, it was being severed at the, uh, at just a little bit past the wrist and it's scraping. It started scraping from the wall down the chalkboard and you can just imagine the sound that these claws are gonna make going down this board. And then I just added uh, a couple of bits of chalk, uh, a duster and i decided to have like a little hangman down in the bottom right corner and then i just randomly just come up with five plus six equals eleven i just whack that down just to sort of reiterate that this is a blackboard and this um, dismembered hand is scraping down it so I'll leave you with those uh, with those wonderful thoughts of polystyrene and scraping down a chalkboard, and I'll and I will be back in a couple of minutes, and hopefully I've recovered. My teeth don't feel chattery and sensitive. Day 19 is ponytail. Now some fun facts about the origins of the ponytail or Q in which it was called until the 20th century. Ponytails have been tracked back to ancient Greece. Ponytails were seen in paintings of women with high ponytail type styles adorning their heads. In the 17th century, the Manchu people of northeast China would grow their hair long, shave it at the front, and either put the hair in a ponytail, braid, or bun slash top knot, which usually meant submission as failing to do so would result in execution. In the 18th century, sartorial soldiers wore them as it was a mandatory requirement but must not exceed eight inches in length. They had their hair greased, powdered, and tarred in place. In the 20th century, Barbie was created with the ponytail, making it a huge fashionable thing from the 50s onwards and basically bringing it back once again. Now in 2022, we have all sorts of ponytails, man buns, etc. And it's now such a unisex hairstyle that just keeps reinventing itself. For the illustration that I decided to do for ponytail, I did a back shot of someone like a, a woman with a beautiful, elegant um, ponytail wall, well, as beautiful and elegant as I could draw it. Um, but yeah, I had to add that um, half her torso has been, um, you know, disappeared and you can see some of her spine and ribs and um, the, these weird hideous eyes have come around and they're like looking at you and you can only imagine what this woman's face looks like if her eyes, if she's got like, 
you know, five sets of eyes and they're coming out of her face. You can just imagine what monstrosity is on the other side. So yeah, I just did that. And for some reason, it just felt right to put a, um, a border around her. I don't know why, it just felt like it. I just wanted to do a border. So that's why there's like this um, so-called incomplete rectangle frame around her. Just wanted to do it, just felt right. So I'll let you watch the rest of this one and I'll be back uh, in a minute with the last prompt in this video. Day 20, Bluff. Now, this one, I come across some scary facts about a particular bluff in Canada. So this one's called the Scarborough Bluffs, and it's a stretch of shore which is situated at the north side of a lake in Ontario in Canada. The bluffs are dangerous and are eroding a lot, so hikers need to be rescued frequently from this location. Whatever you do, don't go near the edge because it is extremely unstable. By law, you are not allowed to climb the bluffs as it's huge fines, but people seem to ignore the signs and still go near the bluffs. People need rescuing from this place have the rescue costs to deal with. Dozens of people need rescuing each year from here. That's just ridiculous. People just stay the fuck away. Like, what is what is it with people and having to test their fate? People have died here. Some have drowned. At the bottom, bodies have been found, um, you know, discovered floating suspiciously. And people have fallen to their deaths after trying to climb the bluffs. Now, with this illustration, um, I was kind of on the fence with this one. Like, I'm not sure if I like it or not. Um, but after about um, like a day, I sort of came around to it a little bit. But um, yeah, this the, the illustration for Bluff I decided to do was some floating islands sort of um, in the sky, sort of recreating um, sort of like a Bluff scenario where you've got all these little black um, type creepy little um, humanoid little dudes and they're um, basically betraying uh, the the danger and that's why I've got them hanging from ropes I know it's a bit morbid um, but I decided to have them suspending from ropes being hung just to sort of portray that um, you know don't go near this particular location because you're gonna die if you do like if you accidentally like 
um, fall off uh, the sides or, or you, you step on some unstable ground, this is what's going to happen. And like one of the little dudes is not being hung by a rope. He's trying to get up. He's trying to climb and it's he's just going to fall. He's going to fall to his death from however long this, uh, or however high this, um, these floating um, bluffs are in the sky. And um, for some weird reason, I stuck a ladder on the side. Once again, uh, makes no sense, but it just sort of felt right. So that's what I did for that one. And... That uh, brings an end to another Inktober video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed these prompts. Hopefully you're still going. Um, I'm sort of starting to dwindle off a little bit. I'm sort of, um, I, I, I tend to get to the halfway point because this is the halfway point now and I get a little bit, um, uh, what do you call it? So I get a little bit sick of doing these and I sort of want to go back to watercolor and do my um, other stuff and I really want to get back into my conspiracy and true crime and scary facts videos um, but I never give up uh, this happens every year if you go back and watch my other playlists I, I get to about the halfway mark and I complain about the same thing so yeah I'll get over it uh, but anyway I'm out of here and I'll see you guys in the next one bye